sign of good faith? Sanders spent much of the briefing slamming Bob Woodward's new book depicting a dysfunctional administration. Earlier on Twitter, President Trump called Woodward a liar. He was like a Dem operative prior to the midterms. But on CBS Sunday morning, Woodward stood by his reporting. You look at the operation of uh, this White House and uh, you have to say, let's hope to God we don't have a crisis. But Sanders also doubled down on the president's suggestion that the Justice Department should look into the identity of the writer of that anonymous New York Times op-ed that supports Woodward's reporting. But Jeff, she could not specify what federal crime the person may have broken. The company for 15 years was ousted last night after the number of women accusing him of sexual misconduct grew to 13. Today we learn the financial terms of his departure. Here's Tariqa Duncan. Just hours after The New Yorker posted an article yesterday about Leslie Moonves, CBS announced the media mogul was stepping down as chairman and CEO. According to financial filings, as part of an agreement with CBS, Moonves will not receive any immediate compensation or benefits. Pending the results of the independent investigation, he could receive up to $120 million. He will become an unpaid advisor to CBS with an office and home security protection, and CBS has agreed to donate $20 million to organizations that support the Me Too movement. In the most recent New Yorker article, six additional women accused Moonves of sexual harassment or assault between the 1980s and early 2000s. The allegations range from forcing a woman to perform oral sex on him to exposing himself without consent and physical violence and intimidation. Moonves said in a statement, untrue allegations from decades ago are now being made against me that are not consistent with who I am. You know, you hear about these things, but you don't think it's going to happen to you. Former television executive Phyllis Golden Gottlieb worked with Moonves at Laura Martella Pictures in the 80s. She says Moonves forced her to perform oral sex on him. He grabbed my head and grabbed it and pushed it down. I mean, I knew what was happening, but it was horrendous. Her attorney, Gloria Allred, says tomorrow Gottlieb will be interviewed by investigators from CBS. Moonves, who says he never misused his power to harm or hinder anyone, joined CBS in 1995. Julie Chen is married to Moonves and has stood by him. Today, she did not appear on the CBS show The Talk, where she is a co-host. Her co-host didn't hold back. Today, we say enough is enough. In a statement today, the interim chairman and CEO, Joe Ionello, said it is the people of this corporation that make CBS what it is. In addition to Moonves, the CBS board continues to investigate sexual harassment allegations against 60 Minutes executive producer Jeff Fager and the culture at CBS News. Jeff, no word on how long those investigations will take. Tarika, thanks to you and the entire team. There could be a new crisis unfold. have been displaced in Idlib province, the last rebel holdout on the verge of falling. CBS's Deborah Pata tonight is along Syria's border with Turkey. Straight Russian airstrikes and Syrian barrel bombs have pummeled in. It prompted the United Nations to warn that this worst humanitarian catastrophe of the 21st century already fled from other parts of Syria. They have nowhere left to go. So they run with homemade gas masks. It's pitifully little when you're up again. Resume the grim routine of collecting the dead and saving the injured, but they are not immune. Here, a second explosion strikes them down as And while the bombs fall, the, the UN and Russia are discussing a new Syrian car removed from Idlib to Tushal lights are powerless to advance. But Turkey has already closed its borders, saying it cannot cope with the new influx of refugees. It already has 3.5 million living here, Jeff. Deborah Pata, thank you. Coming up next here on the CBS Evening News, accusations of sexism on the court.